You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Nery here from Drake Queen Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you with a Let's Play episode of Psychic Connections: Quinn's Path. So, the last place we left off, we were just inducted into the group, and uh, you know, we, we 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 were pretty honest about how it made us feel, and we learned that we, you know, possibly have psychic powers of our own. And you guys, uh, most of you have already seen this part, but we're going to be sticking very closely to Quinn. Uh, let me plug my phone in and charge it, because i got to go to work in a little bit. Yep, uh, holiday rush is almost over, and hopefully I will be out of retail next year. Here's hoping, alright? Yeah, here's hoping I can just make a living off of my YouTube channel, you know, that's the dream. But anyway, guys, let's jump right into it. Alright. <clears throat> Alarm Chan. Alarm Chan. There we go. Now that I'm trying to sit. Alright, guys, let's do it! Alright. Pretty much. Welcome to the club. The deer scowls as he slumps back into his seat, expressing a rare show of defeat. It's been a little rough. Thankfully, we, we have each other to lean on to make things easier. It hadn't really occurred to me that they might not be happy about their own situation. Normally, in any of the stories I've read, having basically superpowers had little to no downsides. But if they don't really have control of them, that'd just be a world of inconvenience. How haven't they been caught or uplifted by some secret government organization yet? I think I can almost understand the urgency to include me. How many people could they even talk to about this? It must be hard. It is somewhat. It has been difficult in different ways for all of us, but we're making the most of it. More than anything, Mason, we're just hoping you'll be open-minded enough to join us. Even if you don't realize it yet, sooner or later, sooner or later you'll discover your own psychic ability, what your psychic ability is. We can help you when that time comes. Yes. So, what would I need to do? Sign some sort of blood oath or something? What? No! You just joined us for our meetings. That's it. Occasionally, you might try to do something together as a group. <laughs> what, Zoe means, what Zoe means to say is that on occasion, she will force us together into various uncomfortable activities. Oh, come on, it's never that bad. Please. I had a sunburn for weeks after that beach expedition you put us through. What's that, guys? Gotta sneeze. Oh my god, it was a giant sneeze. I thought it was pretty memorable. I'd never been to the beach before. Exactly, Quinn gets it. Outside of a little sunburn and Jude being too much of a grump to go swimming, it was a blast. I told you, I didn't have a good pair of trunks for the beach. Crazy as it sounds, I agree with Aiden. It was a dumb trip. <laughs> I'm so sorry you feel that way, dude. To think I'd convince myself he had he had enjoyed collecting all those seashells. Yeah, well, not like there was much else to do. The others laugh while Jude simply sits back with a huff. It's strange. I wasn't sure if they were even friends before, but now they're all bantering like they've known each other for ages. It feels less tense than before, as if the previous revelation of their supernatural abilities had never been had never ha even happened. Maybe that's why they really spend time together, because it's the only time they feel normal. They aren't necessarily bad people. They're strange, sure, but everyone has their quirks. Plus, if Zoe's right about me, then maybe it isn't the worst idea to join them. Though that small voice in the back of my head telling me to get up and leave hasn't quite gone away yet. Alright, sure. I think I get it. Huh? I might not be sure about all the psychic business, in fact, I still think it's pretty crazy. Despite that, you haven't given me much of a reason not to believe you. I'm hoping you can give me a bit more time to adjust to all this. Of course, Mason. In that case, without further ado, welcome to the Psychic Concord. Concord? It's Zoe's word of the week. It means a few different things, but she's using it as a synonym to friendship. What's the point of using complicated words like that? Just say what you mean. So people can't be as direct as you, Jude. <sighs> Sounds like another mug, bro. What do you mean? No more than a couple seconds after he spoke, the sound of something shattering could be heard from the kitchen area. The large panther simply sighs, shaking his head in disappointment. You know that girl's far too ditzy for her own good. Either fire her or keep out of her, keep her out of your kitchen. Aiden, as much as I value your input, I hope you'll leave the management of my cafe to me. 
Anyway, as fun as this all was, I'm afraid I have to get back there. Jude, do you think you'd be willing to put in an extra shift? Sure, you know I'd never say no to more hours. You work here? Part-time, but I'm always picking up a shift here and there when Elliot needs me. Somehow, I can't even picture the big buck working in the service industry. The thought of him greeting customers with a large smile? No, I simply can't imagine it. Judy excuses himself and follows Elliot into the kitchen. Then there were four. I'll dearly miss Jude, but I'm excited to talk with you more, Mason. Aha, as I with you. Was that a pun? Aiden rolls his eyes so hard I think they might roll back into his skull. Meanwhile, Zoe simply shakes her head. Based on their reactions, this might be a regular occurrence. It's possible that Quinn might simply be a terrible joke enthusiast. Or at least it would be, but honestly, this might be a good this might be good timing. I actually had something else I needed to take care of today. What do you mean? When I texted everybody, you said you'd be free today. I mean, yeah, I am, provided I skip class to be here. It's the first week of the semester, and you're already skipping classes, Quincy. Oh, God. I told you not to call me that! Quinn has an expression I've never seen on his face before. Somehow it's even more intimidating when considering I've rarely seen him without a stupid grin across his mug. It would seem he gets triggered by someone saying his full name, though I'm not sure why. Please, I'll, I'll go now, okay? I was just excited, and I figured it was another introduction. I would have seen the instructor later to get the syllabus. You can't be skipping class, Quinn. What if an actual emergency occurs and you need those days? Jeez, I get it. If not for another hour, so for another hour. I'll be able to make it no problem. Hmm. Well, it'll probably go faster if we get going now. You're going too? I have to get preparations started for cleanup after the club fair. We don't know when the frat wave will pass through this time around. We have to be prepared for those Neanderthal pledges. If it's such a problem, couldn't you just report it? We have. However, for some asinine reason, the dean refuses to do anything. He stated the fraternities were just living out their youth. It's absurd, but there's nothing more I can do. What about you, Mason? Everyone seems to be going their separate ways. What are you going to do? That's a good question. I do have a class later today, but I don't have to head back quite yet. I could stay here, maybe see how Jude acts at work. Actually try some of the big goods and chat with Elliot. Alternatively, I could head to campus early with Quinn Aiden. It never hurts to be early to class. Head back to school. The school is cool. God, I can't. I'm sorry. I, no, no, no. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. That's... <laughs> oh, God, that sounds like the dope. Uh, don't copy that, Floppy. <laughs> I think I'll join you guys on the walk back. The class isn't until later, but if I don't come up with anything else, I can just head back to my room. See? See, Quinn? Mason here is taking his studies seriously, and you should be too. I'll get right on it, Mom. Hey, I'll walk back with you guys too. Probably for the best before I get another espresso. We almost motion towards the exit of the cafe. We all motion towards the exit of the cafe. Elliot waves good waves good uh, goodbye while Jude simply stares at us as we leave. Thankfully, the sun is out and shining today. The slight chill I felt this morning has become a comfortably cool breeze. We begin walking towards the campus. Quinn and Zoe are chattering away while Aiden trails behind us. Seriously, it was the drunkest I'd ever been. I don't know, Zoe. Do you remember Jude's last birthday? Correction, it's the drunkest I can remember being. <laughs> I'm glad I had to be sober. It was some of the funniest stuff I've ever seen. Seriously, she gave Jude a lap dance. Hey, I bet I was pretty sexy. I mean, I wouldn't mind seeing that. Ah, I'm sorry, what? Mm, mm, okay. Considering you could barely keep your balance and Jude was radiating discomfort, I don't think sexy is the word I'd use. Speaking of, it's coming up again in a couple months, so keep your calendars open. The man is turning 24. Do we really need to celebrate every birthday? Yes, because who knows how many more we'll get to celebrate together. We're graduating next year, Aiden. Besides, I know why you really don't want to celebrate. Aiden shifts and what I can only assume is in discomfort. Why? Do you not like parties or something? Aiden doesn't like spending too much time around Jude. 
Well, he doesn't exactly make it easy to spend time with him. That's true. <clears throat> ah, ah, Quinn, what happened to your voice? That's true, but we all know it's more than that. What do you mean? Well, I'm sure you've probably noticed by now that Jude is a little intense. Okay, I'm not sure what that has to do with anything. Jude is... Well, it's not so much that he's intense. Rather, he's very... Passionate. It makes him and Aiden a little less compatible. Somehow, I'm still not following. Are they trying to say Aiden's too reserved? Less compatible how? It's a burden of my empathic abilities. I tend to get a bit swept up in strong waves of emotion. So, because Jude tends to feel things so strongly, it affects you. Exactly. That's why I find myself becoming more argumentative around Jude. I still remember when you screamed at that mom on the plane. Well, her child was crying and she was just idly watching a movie. Outside of being neglectful, I was doing everyone on the plane a service. Somehow, I think more people just assumed you were a pompous ass who couldn't handle sitting in front of a crying baby. I wouldn't have to had to do that if you'd not insisted we give that older couple our first-class tickets. Regardless of our, regardless of your issues, Aiden, you have to be there. You too, Mason. I've got the perfect plan this year. I have to come? I don't even know what to bring. Don't worry about it. You've only, do, you've only just met, so chances are anything you got him would work. Just don't get him what Elliot got him two years ago. What did Elliot get him? A book with a series of pickup lines and date ideas. Yeah, I get Elliot was trying to nudge Jude to get out there, but there isn't a universe he was ever going to use that. So, what was the plan this year? It's a secret. If it's a secret, how exactly do you prepare appropriately? Don't worry, all the preparations will be made ahead of time. How cryptic. I'm not too sure how I feel about a mystery birthday party. Jude doesn't strike me as someone who would enjoy a surprise party. Although, if he really does, if he really does know what the, what's about to happen, I can't imagine that kind of party would work either. Oh wait, hang on. I need to stop here to grab a bite. Quinn points to a small corner store. It looks a bit run down. Really, Quinn? Couldn't you wait until after your class? No, Aiden, I really can't. I'm hungry, and there's only one thing that will fill me up right now. Please don't say instant no Instant noodles! Before Aiden can protest further, the bunny bounds onwards into the small store. Aiden simply stands there, shaking his head, while Zoe simply chuckles as if this was an ex was if as if this was an expected outcome of our trip. One of us should probably go in there, just to make sure he doesn't take too long. One second, guys. Okay, all better. You're right, I'll go. You'll be here when you're done, just try not to take too long. I nod and quickly move to catch up to the rabbit ahead of me. Entering the small store, the first thing I notice is the strong stench of tobacco. It's almost nauseating. I see Quinn moving down one of the small aisles and pursue him. Turning the corner, I see him duck down and looking at various packages. He turns to me, holding two instant ramen noodle cups. Hey Mason, help me out. Which flavor should I get? On one hand, I love the chili flavor. On the other, I've never tried the lime one. Do both. I'm not too knowledgeable on the subject, but I, I'm sure I can suggest one. Um, I was Quinn talking. I'm not too knowledgeable on the subject, but I'm sure I can suggest one. Let's do both. Lot chili lime? Are you kidding me? Mix that shit. If you don't like the lime flavor, you can always get the chili as a backup. Well, that's well, that's definitely a logical solution. Usually, I try not to overspend, but I can't pass this up. Overspend? They're like 99 cent cup of noodles. After resolving to get both cups of noodles, Quinn moves further into the store towards the drink section. So, how are you holding up? What do you mean? You know, with all of us being crazy people with otherworldly powers. Oh, I mean, I guess fine. Thinking about it, I had calmed down quite a bit from the initial shock. It's certainly still strange to me, yet I don't feel exactly repulsed by it. You don't think we're monsters about to sprout third eyes or tentacles or something? Hmm, well if you do, I'll be sure to run away. For now though, I think I'm safe to learn more about all this. Well, I'm glad we didn't scare you off. 
I guess technically, I knew that it'd work out one way or another. It's been a while since something's happened to make me doubt my visions. Do they really always come true? Yep, every time, no matter what I do or who I tell about them. They always happen exactly as I see them. Although it took me a while to figure out the difference between visions and some of my more realistic dreams. I was once convinced that I was going to find myself naked on stage at school during a play. Thankfully, it was just a stress dream. Still though, that's pretty neat being able to see the future. Yeah, I'm still waiting for my vision that tells me the winning lottery numbers though. We laugh at the notion, but thinking about it, that'd be quite abusable if Quinn could control what he saw. Also, it's also interesting to know that he can't prevent his visions from coming true. Almost like the timeline he sees accounts for him seeing into the future. I wonder what kind of implications this has on those time travel movies, because it would imply time already accounts for any interference. Hello, Earth to Mason, you good? While I was contemplating the implications of time and space, Quinn had already paid for his noodles and carrot juice. I must have been too lost in thought. Yeah, sorry, you just got me thinking about stuff. Oh yeah? Well, be sure to tell me about it on the walk back. Come on, Aiden's bound to be fuming at this point. We walk back out of the store to find Aiden and Zoe at the side of the building, Aiden tapping his foot, staring at his watch. We're back! I hope you enjoyed your short shopping spree. We better get moving if you want to get to class on time. Sorry, Aiden. I got hit with a hard choice of which noodle flavor I wanted. Really, Quinn? Surely you could eat something more fulfilling. You know what? Quinn stops himself as he looks at me. He closes his mouth and takes a deep breath. I appreciate your input, Aiden, but I like what I like. Besides, it's something I can make while I grab my backpack from my room. Does your room have a microwave? Yeah, I tend to make popcorn whenever I'm on a late night binge. Which is like, every night. Whatever, we need to get moving. You got what you needed, so let's get going. As pushy as he was being, Aiden was right. We needed to get it going if Quinn wanted to make it on time. The rest of the walk was fairly uneventful. We all went our separate ways once we got back on campus. I'd returned to my room for a few hours, and I spent them just thinking about everything that's happened. Time seemed to fly by because I ended up having to rush to make it on time to my psychology class. Though I wouldn't have missed much, much like my English course the other day, it seems like it's just the instructor explaining how they run the class. I didn't know anybody in the class, and nobody seemed particularly interested in talking to me either. If anything, most of them looked pretty brain dead. Not that I'm any different, although maybe it's because my mind keeps being drawn elsewhere. I wonder if the instructor will ever talk about the psychological instincts some students have to tune out of their professors. I can definitely understand why Quinn wants to skip the first day of a course. All I want to do is pack up and go. I can't stop thinking about how everything seems different now. I know nothing has actually changed, but I can't look at people the same way. Who do I know that none of the other students in this class are psychic? Though, for that matter, how do I know the other students here aren't aliens or androids from the future? I think I'm starting to become a conspiracy nut job. Zoe texted me during the lecture and gave me Elliot's phone number. I guess, I guess that I'm able to contact anyone in the club. Beyond that, the class passed by uneventfully. Hopefully I'm able to enjoy it more when I have less on my mind. Other students filed out of the classroom relatively quickly, but I lagged behind. I feel like I didn't do that much today, yet at the same time, I know my brain is positively fried. With nothing else planned for today, it only makes sense that I head back to my room and get some, and get some much needed rest. Ah, hold, hold, hold up. Ah, at home sweet home. No place I'd rather be but- FUCK! I feel a sharp pain pass through me, through me as I stub my toe against the ladder of the bunk bed. Not sure I pulled that one off, but I suppose I've had ditzier moments. Damn, that hurt. I slowly crawl up to the top bunk and pull myself beneath my warm blankets. I can't believe psychics are real. It makes me feel almost normal despite the whole coma thing. Though, I guess I'm a psychic too, according to Zoe. I wonder what it is that I'm supposed to be able to do. She said that if I hadn't noticed, it was probably something smaller. I guess if I really am psychic, I'll probably know when it happens. Pulling up my phone, I'm surprised to see that Zoe added me to a group chat. I swear, sometimes her timing with my thoughts makes me almost wonder if she can actually tell whenever I think about this stuff. Hey Mason, thought I'd, thought I'd add you to the group chat. 
trademark. Welcome, Mason. Do try to avoid using this channel later in the evening, since some of us need our rest. Hi! Hi, everyone! So yeah, this is where we make a lot of our plans for our meetings and trips. Hopefully we haven't scared you off quite yet. Elliot, your caps lock is on again. It is. Oh, sorry about that. Jude, are you still up? Yes. Why aren't you saying anything? I don't know. Is there anything more you wanted to discuss now that Mason has joined us, Zoe? I didn't have anything else in mind, no. Okay, then I'll be meeting this chat for the evening. <laughs> well, okay, Boomer. 10-4, dinosaur. Anyway. Anyway, welcome, Mason, and I hope you'll be patient with all of us. I've got some stuff to take care of, so I'll talk to you later. I flopped my phone back down. I consider sleeping, but somehow that brief conversation has got my brain turning once more. I've got a few more hours until I really need to get some sleep. Maybe I should text someone. Zoe's doing nothing, so I should probably, should, probably shouldn't disturb her. Zoe's doing something, so I probably shouldn't disturb her. This could try one of the guys. Oh. Well, well. Well, well, what a decision we have arrived to. Of course, you guys know how I'm going to do this one. It's going to be Quinn, of course. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.